Hi, this is Brewbird. So a few months ago, I went on a trip to Tennessee, and I happened to meet a moonshiner from Indiana who was teaching me some interesting moonshining tricks that I'd never heard of before. So today, I want to go over three amazing moonshining tricks. So let's go! So first off, I want to talk about what moonshine is. Moonshine is a high ABV liquor, usually 40 to 60% ABV, produced illegally or in other words, without government authorization. It's called moonshine because it's traditionally illegally distilled during the night to avoid being discovered by law enforcement. Since it's done illegally, moonshine is usually distilled in flimsy homemade stills found in the mountains or woods. While any type of fruit or grain can be used to make moonshine, it's often made with corn since that was an abundant crop in the United States. Reading the beat. Moonshiners have a way of measuring the alcohol content of a spirit by just shaking the jar of spirit. They look at the bubbles, and if the alcohol content in the spirit is very high, then the beads or the bubbles will be very big in the spirit and will pop very quickly. If the alcohol content is very low, then the bubbles will be very small and will linger for a longer period of time on the surface. This has to do with the different surface tension that water has versus alcohol. Since water has a higher surface tension, the bubbles linger for a longer period of time than water. I was surprised to hear that there are moonshiners that still read the bead rather than purchasing a hydrometer or refractometer, which are very affordable these days. Some moonshiners are very good at reading the bead and being able to say exactly what the alcohol content is. If you want to train yourself to read the bead, I would suggest preparing jars of alcohol with different alcohol percentages. You can line the jars up from the highest to lowest percent ABV spirit. Then you can shake each jar one by one and compare how big the bubbles are and how long the bubbles take to pop in each jar. You can use a stopwatch to see how long the bubbles take to pop. In this way, you can train yourself to more accurately guess the percent ABV. Let me demonstrate how to read the bead. So to get the most accurate reading, you should hold the jar horizontally and then you shake it very vigorously and you can see like there's a lot of bubbles on the surface and then they kind of create a line and slowly dissipate. So that's what you're kind of counting and looking at um, to see how fast that line, those lines of bubbles will disappear. This is a nice little trick to have up your sleeve when you don't have a measuring instrument to use. But to be honest, I don't really see why someone wouldn't just buy a cheap hydrometer to do the reading with. So when I first started trying to learn to read the bead, I held the jar uh, upright and you see I shake it by making a little bit of a tornado uh, and then afterwards I found out that this is totally not right. Um, the jar has to be held horizontally. Um, so that's my big tip here. Okay, it is going. So yeah, there's no bubbles. This is at 94%. Okay. Now we're gonna go to 80%. Oh. Three more bubbles. A little bit bubbles? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to 70. More, more bubbles in the center. Okay. Let's see, that one seems to be Yeah, you foaming. see the bubble, the foaming in the 62%. Okay, moving on to 50%. Now it's a lot of bubbles are there. Okay, yeah, 
moving to 42%. Oh yeah, there's a lot of bubbles in the center of the vortex. You see? And then now we'll do water. A lot of foam in the center. Lots mm. of foam and it's staying still there. Still hasn't cleared. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the yeah. water doesn't foam as much. What it does, it, it lasts longer. That foams the most, and as you get higher, it mm -hmm. it's cleaner. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, there's oh, no bu bubbles in there. Yeah, I don't see any bubbles in the vortex. No bubbles at all. That's good. It turns out oatmeal isn't just for breakfast anymore. Stills use for making moonshine can be flimsy and leak during distillation, especially where the still parts are manually connected. So if a moonshiner spots an area on the still that's leaking, they can take some quick oats, add a bit of water to it, and make a thick paste. This paste can be applied all around the leaky area on the still while it's, the still is still running. Since the still is very hot while it's running, the oatmeal paste will cook and harden up like concrete or a sealant to prevent any further leakage. This is probably my favorite trick that I learned. Another thing is you can add a little sugar to your oatmeal paste and form a little patty with your hands. If you're distilling with a thumper keg, you can put your little patties on the thumper keg and wait for it to cook while you're doing your distillation. Once it cooks, you can take it off and you can have yourself a sweet little oatmeal biscuit snack to eat while you're running your distillation. When you're making your oatmeal paste, uh, it's just to add a little bit of water to the oatmeal to start and really mush it with your hands. And you want it quite thick, like not watery at all. Um, and so when you apply the paste onto the stills or the part that's leaky, it will just heat up and harden. After the distillation is complete, the paste uh, should just be able to flake right off. It should be quite easy to take off after the distillation and it's very easy to clean. When I met this moonshiner from Indiana, he had what I thought was a toothpick tucked behind his ear. But then he took it out and told me it was a peen coon, which is the penile bone of a raccoon. Other names for it are a coon pecker or an Alabama toothpick. At first I thought he was joking, but it turns out you can really buy raccoon penile bones off of Amazon. So go figure. It turns out that most mammals have a penis bone and it's called a baculum, also known as the penis bone or penile bone. The only mammal species without a baculum are humans, horses, donkeys, rhinoceroses, marsupials, rabbits, cetaceans, um, a, which is a marine family that includes whales and dolphins, um, and elephants and hyenas. Walruses have by far the largest penile bone at 1 meter or 39 inches, inches. So that's just some interesting research that I found on penis bones, but let's get back to moonshining. Okay, so what does the peen coon do? Well, you know that little outlet where the moonshine leaves the still? Moonshiners like to stick their peen coons in the outlet, and because of the naturally hooked shape of the peen coon, the distillate travels drop by drop along the peen coon and drips into whatever collection vessel you have set up. Using a coon peen as a drip tube allows the moonshine to flow off predictably. Honestly, this was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. It doesn't seem like the peen coon serves any purpose aside from acting as a drip tube, but I'm curious to know who even came up with the idea of doing this. If you're interested in learning more about distilling, 
then I've created an online course called the basics of distillation where I go over the science behind distilling and how to make uh, spirits such as whiskey rum and gin um, so please check it out I'll leave the link to the course in the description below for you to learn more about Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more drinks about distilling, brewing, and drinks. This is Brewbird sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.